excited to have all of you on and I'm sure other colleagues are still logging on. So in the meantime, as we wait for other people to join, uh, we are going to give them like two to three minutes. I'm going to show the housekeeping rules as we wait for our colleagues to join. And then I'll talk about them briefly, like one or two minutes, then we should be good to start. Thank you. Okay, so again, you're very welcome, everyone, uh, to this Afrohun Regional E-Learning uh, Virtual Community of Practice, uh, Echo Session 7, uh, which is going to be very interesting. So I want to begin by taking us through briefly our housekeeping items. I've uh, been projecting them. I'm sure we have seen these, and these are the usual. But just to reemphasize that uh, in case you have any IT related issues, you could chat the Echo IT uh, that will troubleshoot uh, any issues. And we also request that you rename yourself with your name and organization. But later on, we are going to share a link where you can also go ahead and give us additional uh, data. Uh, important to note is also that um, we have the chat room where you can paste any comments, any questions that we are going to pay attention to. So we request that you keep your videos on if you can, especially if your bandwidth allows. And we are doing this because we want to have that uh, feel of, of, of the community. But in case your bandwidth can't allow, uh, then you can switch off your video. Uh, we also request that you keep your microphones muted at all times unless you are speaking. So we are recording this session uh, and your attendance, uh, we take it as consent to be recorded. Uh, thank you. So we, as usual, we do uh, share with you slides and the recording link, uh, both on email and on our Slack, but also on the WhatsApp group. So you will be able to get this. I should emphasize that we usually give uh, a certificate of, us, of attendance uh, especially if you take a short survey that we do paste at the end of this session and it will be pasted. So please take that survey. It helps us to evaluate the session and uh, it guides us on improvements uh, moving forward. So uh, these are quickly the, 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 the housekeeping rules, but also to say that we have uh, French interpretation colleagues uh, in case you have any issues with uh, French interpretation, still you could paste, you could chat with the ECHO IT team, but you can join uh, the French interpretation using this, as you can see on this screen, uh, the sign of a globe, then you go to French, uh, it should be able to take you to French. So briefly, uh, those are our housekeeping rules, but once again, we are really happy to have a session and uh, at this time you will allow me to uh, invite uh, our colleague uh, Richard uh, probably before I invite Richard we want to hear from any of us that have not uh, introduced themselves before you remember we have been introducing ourselves in cohorts so if you have not introduced yourself since the community started please feel free to open your mic and tell us briefly your name and uh, the institution where you're coming from. Then we should pick it up from there. Thank you. Good 
Do we have somebody who has not attended these sessions before? Please open your mic and uh, introduce yourself to the community. Okay. So good evening. The Finch interpretation. So, oh, good evening, Dege. <laughs> yeah, yes, good evening. Uh, I, I am Professor Speranza Ndege. I'm the director of Open Distance and e-learning e at the University of Embu. I'm, 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 I'm joined under the invitation of one of my colleagues who is uh, presenting, Dr. Zipenjagi. Nice so to she's see. The one who invite, she's the one who invited me and they, and they, and they, and they funded me the link. Nice to see you, to hear from you, Professor Ndege. Yes, I'm uh, very happy to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Any other person? Please feel free to introduce yourself briefly. Hello, good evening. Good evening, my Cecilia. Name, my name is Cecilia Chege. I'm from the University of Embu. I'm glad to be here. I was invited by Dr. Zipi Jage, and um, I'm so happy and delighted to be here. Thank you. Thank you, Cecilia. Happy to have you. Any other person? Good evening. Good evening, Paul. Uh, my name is Paul Gidenji Maina. I'm from the University of Embu. I'm here as uh, from, uh, I was given an invite by Dr. Zipi Njagi, who's presenting, and I'm glad to be here. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. We are happy to have you, Paul. Any other person? Okay, thank you everyone. So at this point, allow me to invite uh, uh, Dr. Richard Kajumbula to uh, introduce the topic, today's topic, and introduce our case presenter uh, who should take us uh, from here. Over to you, Richard. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, um, uh, Christine, and uh, good evening, good morning, and good afternoon, colleagues. Yes, today this is our seventh session in which we are going to look at um, online activities. Uh, I think, um, Christine, should I go through the session flow or agenda or it's okay, we can just go into the program? Oh, Richard, I think you can briefly take us through the agenda just briefly, what is going Very to happen. Very briefly. Maybe okay, thank minute. you so much. Thank you so much. So uh, I'm just going to talk through it since uh, for the interest of time, we're going to, uh, have a case study presentation that is going to lay the uh, foundation for today's uh, presentations. We shall have a uh, subject matter expert, but between there, we shall give you opportunity to ask if you want anything clarified about the case. And then our case study presenter, rather our subject matter expert will come in, make a presentation, and we shall have a task or an activity to do. So this session is going to be interactive. We shall have an activity, and then we shall present, one or two of us shall present, and the subject matter expert will again make some clarifications. After, after that session, we shall have a short question and answer session, then announcements, then wrap up. But then uh, a registration link is going to be put in the chat so that you can register. I'm just emphasizing. So please register your presence and you can also get a certificate for today's uh, attendance. So thank you um, so much. So today, uh, the topic is um, designing online activities or um, activities. That's, that's our topic uh, for the day. And you know that um, as you do online learning or as you do online teaching and learning online facilitation, uh, you want to do active learning, learners have to be engaged. And so many times uh, we need to go around designing those activities. And so today um, for, um, to set the ball, Rolling, we have uh, Dr. Zipi and Yagi from the University of Embu. Uh, Dr. Zipi, uh, on top of being an e learning champion in that university, is from the School of Business. Uh, she's a lecturer in management sciences, but an ardent practitioner of e learning. She's also an examinations coordinator in that school. But most importantly, here, for purposes of this training, she's an e learning champion. So uh, Dr. Zippy is going to take us through a case, the situation that is going to lay um, the foundation 
for our discussion today. After she has presented, uh, we shall request our subject matter expert to make a validation of the case. And then we shall request you colleagues also to speak into that case. If you need anything clarified, speak into it. Then we shall move on to the session of um, the subject matter expert presenting. So allow me now to uh, invite Dr. Zipi Yagi from uh, the University of Embu. And I request uh, Kenneth to, to display that slide deck, actually the, the page where our case study presenter starts. So Kenneth, please, could you just show the, or maybe before you show, Dr. Before you, Kenneth, before you show the slide, maybe let Dr. Yagi first come and uh, you know, speak and greet the colleagues so they can see her, and then she can request for the slides to be up. So Dr. Zipin Yagi, over to you. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Richard, uh, for that uh, very good uh, introduction. So good evening, good morning, participants. Uh, my name uh, is Dr. Zipi Njage. I am greeting you from the University of Embu, Kenya, and I am happy to be a participant in this seventh Eco Region of Virtual Community of Practice uh, session. So you're most welcome. Thank you so much. So as uh, Richard has already uh, introduced uh, or uh, given you my, uh, you know, uh, what I do at the University of Embu, I am a lecturer at the Department uh, of Business Studies. I am also the Departmental Examinations Coordinator, and I am the e-learning champion in the School of Business and Economics. And uh, this is a case uh, study presentation on designing online activities or e-tivities. And I am happy that most of my colleagues from the University of Embu are also present. So I am delighted. So the University of Embu is uh, fairly uh, new. We are located at the, you know, for those people who have heard about Mount Kenya, we are located on the uh, you know, uh, just uh, below Mount Kenya. So if you are at the University of Embu, you should be able to view, to have a very good view of the uh, Mount Kenya. So we became a fully fledged university in the year 2016. And this is when we were awarded our university charter. So we have embraced e-learning as a mode of teaching and learning. And during the COVID-19 pandemic, there was need to design and develop activity-based interactive modules for online and blended learning to conform to international uh, standards. So this one was uh, really enhanced at the University of Embu. And so as an institution, we have been training and retooling the teaching staff continuously to acquire the necessary skills for the online environment. There is an Odell unit which supports all new teaching staff recruited to teach in the university, whether full-time or part-time, to go through the rigorous training to handle students in an online environment. And this unit is uh, led by the Director Open Distance and E-Learning. And I am happy that she's also present here, Professor Ndege. So in every school, we have e-learning champions. We were identified so that we can assist directorate to support the institution with the e-learning uh, teaching. So we have had some challenges as an institution whereby the uptake of e-learning by academic staff is not yet up to speed with the demand uh, for the same. We have also witnessed cases whereby most of our lecturers just upload files onto the learning management system in PDF, Word, or PowerPoint slides uh, formats. And such materials are not interactive and there's little learner engagement. Most of our lecturers, when we ask them, say that it is difficult to design online activities that encourage active uh, learning. So based on all these challenges, 
I have a question. And the question is, how can online activities best be designed to encourage active learning? Thank you very much. Over to you, Richard. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Zippy, for that. In, indeed, how can online activities best be designed to support active learning? So that is our case for the day, but I would like to invite uh, Dr. Harriet Nabshaw, our subject matter expert. Dr. Harriet Nabshaw is a lecturer in the Institute of Open Distance and E-Learning, Macau University. She's a practitioner and a scholar in online and distance learning, and she's coming here to bring expertise and share with us. So for a start, Dr. Nabshaw, would you please greet the colleagues and also validate this case before I invite a member of the audience or any member who has anything they wish to be clarified about the case. So Dr. Nabushao, please. Thank you very much, Richard. Good evening, good afternoon, and good morning, colleagues. You are all welcome. And uh, Richard has already uh, introduced me. Harriet, if it's okay with you, you um, can share your video. You can open your video if it's okay with you. Yeah. Kenneth, you can first uh, wait. You can first go back the question, Kenneth. First go back the yeah. First let him. yes, please. Yeah. Thank you very much, Richard. Good evening, good afternoon, and good morning, colleagues. You're all welcome to this session. I want to validate uh, the case that Dr. Zippy has just presented, that indeed it is a challenge and a problem that needs to be addressed. When it comes to online learning, learning can only take place when it is active. And uh, we make it active when we create activities that are engaging to learners. And this is what we want to look at uh, this afternoon or morning or evening, depending on wherever you are. Thank you very much, Richard. Yeah, th thank you, Dr. Navishaw, for that. So colleagues from our, our, our audience, uh, is, there, is there anybody who, who wants us to clarify anything about that case, anything you would like to add to the Case. Kenneth, you can first uh, go the question, the question that was asked by the, the case study presenter. You can put up that question that was asked by the case study presenter, Kenneth. The question, should, it is, uh, no, no, no. Yeah, that one, that one, yes. Okay, so um, from our audience, anybody with any comment or anything, you want us to clarify about the question at hand today? Uh, we have some, uh, uh, French items uh, posted, but uh, maybe someone can translate those for us. So if you wish to have any comment on the case, on the subject today, before the subject matter expert begins, or something that you'd wish that the case study presenter uh, clarifies, or to say that, or to also validate, and, and if this is familiar to you, or you have a similar situation, you can, you can still come up and um, Say something. You can maybe unmute your microphone and say something, because now it is open to all of us. Having uh, noticed that um, designing online activities is a challenge, and sometimes when learners are not involved, indeed, learning may not take place in this current uh, dispensation of uh, e-learning. So, so, if any member of the uh, uh, Audience wishes to ask something. I don't know, Sarah. Sarah, you have to say something. Oh no, Sarah, I think is part of the team. Anyone want to say something about the case, please? Our audience. Hello. Hello, Irene. Yeah, thank you very much, Richard and everyone. So I have done, I think, only one course that is online. It was a short course. I think one thing I realize is online learning is very lonely. And, uh, so in my view, I think designing this, the designers would have to put at the back of their mind, the, the learner. And as you said, most probably, maybe the learner, sh someone should represent students. I don't know where, how you get them, but it gets very lonely and you feel you are, if you're failing, you're failing alone because uh, no one is supporting you physically and maybe in Africa we are too used to face to face. 
and also um, the the issue of of uh, uh, technology. I think even the people that teach need to be brought on board while designing the, the, the instructors so that they, they actually know. So the, I, I saw the case was uh, the lecturers who are just putting PDFs and Word documents. Were they actually involved in the designing? Is this something that has just been put on the table? So, but, but my main issue is there is a lot of loneliness. Thank you. Yeah, truly. Thank you so much. When Fred, please. Hi, Irene, thank you so much. Uh, you have talked about involved facilitators in the design of the courses and, and also the technology. Uh, Dr. Zippy, are um, uh, the lecturers involved in the design process? Uh, why do they just put these, these PDFs? <laughs> are they involved in the design process or if someone else would put the PDFs and then they call the lecturers to come and and present what someone else has, has put up yes, as a situation. Richard. Yes. Yes, Richard, uh, I, I, I must say that we have tried to engage our lecturers uh, with the support of the Open Distance E-Learning Directorate and uh, um, we've been training them. So, yes, yes they so are it could be that um, probably even in the training, they find the design of activities or activities a challenge maybe that's why they they just run away from it could it be maybe maybe not richard myself i also previously had challenges in designing online activities and sometimes maybe you, you try and then maybe they are not asking what you want to ask maybe sometimes they are too heavy maybe sometimes they are not engaging enough maybe sometimes they're only asking for at knowledge level, not application. So I see that I can be trained in this, but then I can indeed fail to, to, to do it. Maybe that's part of it. But let's see uh, what is subject matter for particular students. Any other comment? Thank you, Irene, for, for pointing out that, and even the technology itself, anyway. And the loneliness that you pointed out that sometimes it's so lonely to, to study, uh, to just read PDFs and read. Maybe when I engage with activity, the activities will become my, my kind of companion. <laughs> but Maybe sometimes they can force me to maybe engage with other people. But if you just put PDFs, of course, it can be very uh, lonely, just like reading a WhatsApp, a long WhatsApp message, which, which sometimes reach in the middle and are actually abandoned. Any other person who has any comment about the case or sharing an experience that is similar to what uh, Dr. Anjagi has presented, or something that you have noticed, which is also a problem around activities or activities that she has not mentioned, but I think it's something that expands uh, the whole realm of the challenges that come with online activity design and which is the subject matter expert should talk about. Yes, colleagues, any? All right, so if we don't have any, any challenge then or any other uh, contribution to that case study, which has been very clear, then uh, I, would th I thank uh, Dr. Zippy for pointing out this and for um, opening our eyes to this very, 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 very important. You, you cannot say that you have an online course when you have no activities. And thank Dr. Zippy Jagi for actually identifying the importance of that and also present, present, presenting it here as a challenge so that uh, we can get advice. So let me now call upon our subject matter expert, given the loneliness that comes with this, given the lack of uh, uh, activities. In fact, if you have no activities online, even learners will be bored because of that loneliness that Irene has talked about, the overload with now reading and reading and reading. So today we are, are graced with the presence of Dr. Harriet Nabushao from the Institute of Open Distance and E-Learning, like she has uh, been already uh, introduced. Uh, she's going to take us through um, the design of online uh, activities or ETVT. So Dr. Harriet Nawishaw, over to you. Okay. Thank you very much, Richard. Is it okay if I shared? Yeah, if, you, if you prefer to share from your end, it's okay. Ken, if you can stop sharing, then she can share from her end. It's okay. Harriet, you can share. Okay. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Richard. Richard has already 
he has already introduced to me, so I, I, didn't, I don't need to go into that again. And uh, I'm also grateful to Dr. Zippy for presenting this case before us, a challenge that uh, we realize that many of us grapple with. And we want to see how we can go around this uh, uh, challenge. So we, we are looking at uh, online activities or what we call activities. So we are saying learners must be given activities Sorry. to enable them to learn um, activities. Could you put yes. it in presentation mode? Could you put it in presentation mode? Oh, yes. Is that fine? That's all right. That's all right. <laughs> OK. Yeah. So I'm saying that uh, learners must be given activities. We are looking at uh, activities. How do we design activities? Like the case was presented to us. The, the challenge was designing activities that, are, that can encourage active learning or that can engage learning. And uh, what are activities? Maybe we need to understand what activities are. And we are saying these are tasks that learners undertake uh, in the process of this, uh, the intended learning, uh, an intended learning uh, outcomes are achieved. So learners must be given activities to enable them to learn. And uh, these activities are the ones that uh, they, they are the one they are activities that's ma that must be active and in so doing when they involve themselves knowledge is being constructed so what kind of activities do we uh, engage learners uh, our learners with we are looking at activities like reading you give the learners an article to read some chapters in a textbook to read that is an activity that you can give a learner and the learner is actually engaged depending on the topic that you're giving them there are the other activity could be listening you give them some audios some materials can be in audio form where learners can listen to to you teaching uh, or lecturing whatever it is so uh, learners can listen. They can also watch videos. You can also make a video of yourself or you can uh, get it. Uh, nowadays, there are many videos, maybe YouTube videos on a related topic or topic that you're, you're handling. You can give such a material to your learners uh, to engage with. Um, they can uh, study graphics or pictures on the topic that you're handling. Another activity could be discussing, discussions. This can be another activity that can be engaging to learners. Uh, I like the, the previous um, uh, 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 person who was talking about loneliness in e-learning. Yes, it is there. But what do we do about this loneliness? When we talk about discussions, we can make discussions where learners can come together. They can pair up, they can be in groups so that they can work together. And in this such, when we do this, we are breaking that uh, loneliness that comes with uh, e-learning. Uh, another activity you can give your learners could be practicals. Of course, depending again on the topic that you're handling, learners can engage in a, in a, in a practical. But of course, uh, practicals can also come in different forms. They can be field trips and others where learners can can work. Uh, that is number seven, visiting a location, depending on, the, again, the topic you're, you're handling or interviewing people. So these are different types of activities. There are many that you can uh, engage your learners with. We vary them because of uh, different reasons, and one of them are learner differences. If some learners may be good at reading, others are good at listening, others are good at watching, you know, sometimes depending on, again, the, the, the content that you're handling, it's very important for us to vary the activities we give uh, learners. The other important thing to note about activities is um, that students can work on activities as individuals or as a group uh, through a collaboration. And they, they, they do this to develop an essay or come up with summaries 
or reports or videos or audios, depending on what artifact or what solution that you want them uh, to come up with. So those are the different activities that uh, we can give learners. And like I said, collaborative activities help learners to break that uh, uh, loneliness among them. One thing that we need to remember when we are constructing activities is constructive alignment. Activities cannot, we, can, we do not develop or construct or design activities out of the blue. Activities must be linked to intended learning outcomes. What is it that you set out to, to you set out that your students must achieve at the end of the course or a topic or a program. So that should inform the kind of activities that you're going to come up with. And of course, consequently, it leads to the kind of assessment that you're going to give. Because at the end of the day, you're going to assess them based on the intended outcomes that you came up with. So we shouldn't uh, come up with activities that are not linked to our uh, to the intended learning outcomes. You'd be wasting the time of the student because the, the, that that wouldn't make sense. So let's keep to the to the intended. We must always keep in mind what is it that I what kind of knowledge or what kind of skills or attitudes that I wanted the learners at the end of the day to come up with. It should inform the kind of activities that you're teaching. What is it that I want the learners? to achieve at the end of this topic, then based on that, to design the activities in response to those internal learning outcomes. Now, when we are looking at, uh, again, activities, this is now construction. When we are constructing or designing activities or activities, it is very, very important for us to mention everything, be clear about everything that you want the learner to do. Now, we, the, when we, we talk about this, we are talking about structure because the uh, Dr. Zippy was uh, talking about lack of engagement, uh, how do we encourage them to, you know, to be active. So be intentional and be intentional when you're designing it. Deliberate about it. What, what is the purpose of this activity? Why, are, uh, why the learners are doing this activity? It goes back uh, to the intended learning outcome. So be very clear from the very beginning uh, how what you excuse me, what you want the learners to do. So number one is the purpose of the activity. What is it that you want the learners to do, or why are the learners doing it? What learners should do? What should the learners do? Be very clear about it. Do you want them to read? Do you want them to listen to an audio? Do you want them to watch a video? Is it discussion? Is it them visiting a certain location like we have seen from, uh, from our examples of activities? Be very clear. Remember you as the instructor, you are not there, but you want this, the learner to engage with the content and you're giving them an activity that is going to help them to understand that content. And at the end of that day, we are to achieve the intended learning outcome. So you must be very clear what learners should do. What do you want them? If you want them to read, say you want to read, read this. Uh, if you want them to watch, tell them watch this video. And then how they can go about doing it. If you're telling me to read, how should I read? If you're telling me to watch, how should I watch? Of course, we are going to see when we are looking at an example, what do you want me to read? Be, be specific about what I'm going to read. Read the chapter, this, this topic uh, on this chapter, on this page. Be very clear, specific about what you want uh, the learner to do? How can they go about doing it? Directions, clear directions should be given to the learners. How long should or could it take in minutes or hours where applicable? Whenever we are giving the learners an activity or activity uh, to engage with, it would be nice to 
uh, not, I wouldn't want to use the word one, but uh, let them know of how long that activity will take so that they can plan accordingly. You can say this text will take you two hours to read, or this video may take you three hours to watch so that uh, somebody doesn't start and goes off and starts and goes off. But if I know that for me to finish this text, I need two hours or to watch this video, I need three hours, then I plan accordingly that I'm going to watch the video and I need three hours and I take off that time to listen to that video so that I can follow everything without any form of distractions. When the activity starts and when it ends, this uh, points to dates, the dates that um, you, you, the instructor, you want that activity to start and when it should end. Deadlines are very key and important in online learning. Uh, may, uh, most importantly, uh, when it, it comes even to group work, because you, you, you're going to see that we, we give instruction, do this by this date, post this in the discussion forum, get feedback from your peers. If you're moving slowly, they will leave you behind. And at the end of the day, you may not benefit. So dates are very important. The instructor must be specific about the start date and the end date so that uh, we can move on. How the learners should work together. Uh, we said that activities can be done individually, but they can also be worked on collaboratively. And they, we are in, actually encourage more of collaborative work because while you're not there, these learners can support each other. And research has proved that peer learning really helps a lot. So this is a, uh, encouraged uh, in e-learning. So learn, if learners are going to work in pairs or in groups, clear guidelines should be provided so that they don't mess up or miss it. What type of artifact solution or outcome to produce? Very clear. You have given them an, an activity or activity. What, what end result do you want? Do you want a summary? Do you want a video? Do you want, a, what is it that you want? Uh, as an instructor, make it clear what you want your learners to come out with, uh, with at the end of this activity. What to do with the artifact or the solution? Okay, I have come up with a summary of two pages, or I have come up with a video that you, you asked us to do. What happens with it? Again, these are students who are not with you. Be very clear about where do I take this work that you have given us to do. Usually, of course, we, we, we have where we post this. If it's not in the discussion forum, then there is somewhere, there is a link where you want your learners to post uh, the solutions or artifacts or the outcomes of the activities that you have given them. So always, make sure that direction is there and clear. And uh, many times uh, the links we give learners, sometimes the learner might click there and the link is not active and that frustrates learners. That actually also points to materials. Sometimes the materials we, we, we actually ask them to read. You say there is an article there, the learner clicks there and the, the link is not active. So where the learner should post the solution, the outcome of the activity, provide the link and the link should be active so that the learners can click there and deposit or upload uh, their work. What the moderator's role is where applicable. Yes, let your learners know what your role will be as far as this activity is concerned. Remember, if it's a collaborative work, even if it's not collaborative, because we are using many times the, the discussion forum for, for, for teaching. So you've told them to post their work in the discussion forum. If you're going to go there and moderate and look at their posts and comment on them, let them know that the instructor will come there and look at what they have posted. That, sometimes that is uh, motivating. So how do we construct activities? Activities are given using a teaching voice. We use a teaching voice. 
when we are designing activities, we are instructing the learners, we are telling them read, we are telling them listen, we are telling them view or watch, you're telling them discuss. That is a teaching voice for the learner. So speak to a learner as an individual, you know, telling them what they are supposed to do. When you do uh, giving activities also, endeavor to give um, authentic tasks. Uh, the reason we emphasize authentic tasks is you're not there, you know, anything, you, you, you don't want uh, somebody else to do work for the student or something like that. But authentic tasks help the learners, you, you know, to, to relate what they have learned to real life, the knowledge or skills that you've given them. That is what you want them to transfer in real life. So the kind of tasks that you give them should be the task that gives them that opportunity to transfer that knowledge and skills into real life problems or challenges to solve them. And that helps the learners to, uh, you know, build learner creativity and also research capacity. And in the process, you know, it, uh, it helps in constructing knowledge. It is also a precursor for deeper learning. So authentic learning is actually emphasized as far as um, activities are concerned. Uh, an example of an activity here, which we want to look at, I've been talking about how an activity should look like and what we should do. So we have an example here, and uh, I want to read it through as I relate back to a few things that I've talked to. So this is activity 1.2. You, you, you as an instructor, you have labeled it that way. It can be 1.1, depending on what it is. So this one is 1.2. And we are saying the purpose of this activity is to enable you learn the characteristics of good research. Remember, we started by saying purpose. Very important. Tell the learner why they need that activity, why it is important for them to engage with that activity. Then you go ahead and say, you will also have an opportunity to suggest characteristics that are not mentioned in the resources you're going to refer to. You're encouraging further research outside, maybe the resources that you have provided. You, you may want your learners to stick to the materials you've given them, but you can also open it up and tell, uh, encourage them to read outside the materials or resources you provided. Once you have made that opening remark, then now you start guiding them of what to do. Read about hallmarks of business research on page cl clarity and specificity is encouraged here. You're not there. Let the learner understand exactly what you want them to do. Read the hallmarks of business research on page 22 to 26 of SECRAN. 2003 available here. There are many aspects in that sentence alone. You want the activity is to read, and you've also told them what to read, hallmarks of business research. You have also given them specific pages to read, and the, the, the author of the book, and the year it was published, and where they can find it available here. That is, you know, all the information the learner needs so that they can do that activity. You've given it to them. You've told them what to do, read. What do I read? You've given them the book title. You have given them the pages. You have given them the author. And they, yeah, the book was published and where they can find the book. So that means as far as accessing material is concerned, the student can access that material. Then you go ahead and tell them, make a summary of 200 words indicating three hallmarks of good research. Make a summary. After you have read those pages, make a summary of 200 words indicating three hallmarks of business research. That means the learner is going to read while taking notes, you know, so that they can make that summary and they pick out the three hallmarks which they would want to present to the instructor. What do I do with what I have made, the summary? 
where what happens then you could give another instruction upload that summary in the group forum available here upload that summary in the group forum discussion forum available here directions are very clear i have read i have made a summary and you're telling me where to put that summary in the discussion forum where do i find the discussion forum it is here so the the learner is very clear remember to include the hallmarks that are not included in the text you read remember you had told them to read outside the textbook so you're again cautioning them not to forget that you wanted them to do some further research very good otherwise they can actually you know get away with it you wanted the three i have given you and i have got it in the textbook but if you remind them then they will remember to put, to read outside and include them do this by uh i can't see that date january 2021 have you seen the date? Very important. Otherwise, everybody will submit this work anytime they want, and that will be a confusion. So that is an example of how our ETVT should look like. But remember, this first session of this ETVT, it is individual. Are we taking note of that? It's one person, a student working. How, and somebody mentioned loneliness, you can imagine this student could be very lonely doing all this alone. But we have provided uh, um, a way out. Then you come back and say, return to the discussion forum, ETV 1.2 for your group. Comment on the practic uh, practicability of the hallmarks in other people's summaries and improve on your summary by adopting some new or good ideas from your peers. You see that? Now, this learner is going to the discussion forum. Others have made posts. He's able to actually look at what other people have read. You are able to see whether you were you on the right track or on the wrong track. What, what is new? Maybe this one has actually made a, a better presentation than mine, even if it's the same point. What can I pick from there? How can I improve on mine? And uh, so the, the learner is going to the discussion forum, is going to meet others there. And we, we have said comment. So you is also going to get feedback from on his work from peers. He's also going to comment on others, peers work. And also you, you can choose if you're 20 students, you can read all the 20 posts and from the 20, you cannot fail to you know, improve your work. At the same time, you're also going to get feedback from your peers. So in so doing, loneliness is, is really being broken. But we go ahead and tell this learner that post your improved summary by this date. So you've worked alone, you've come here and worked with others, but at the end of that day, you have to have your own position on your work. So after you have read, improve on your post and post it by this date. You give them a date so that uh, they don't dilly dally on going to the discussion forum to look at what is happening there. They have to know that by this date, I should have posted my uh, summary. Okay. So uh, that uh, gives us um, a picture of what an ETVT should look like. That's an example of what an ETVT should look like that is engaging to the learners. And like we have said, it depends on the content that you are handling. Here we've been looking at reading as the activity reading and commenting, you know, but uh, you, it can be watching. We also have discussions. It can be, you know, listening, whatever it is, depending on the content that you're handling. So that that brings me to the end of uh, that presentation on activities. And uh, now we want to do some practicals to see whether us who have been listening to this, we can also come up 
in with an ETVT in the next few minutes. I think we we have like 10 minutes or so. I don't know, Richard, how time how we are doing as far as time is concerned. Yeah, I think we can we, we can have some 10 minutes of practice. Okay. Or maybe uh, we can first of all take off a minute in case someone has a question they want you to clarify. Okay. Yes. So I thank you, uh, Dr. Navshaw, for that presentation. Colleagues, if there's anyone who wants to clarify, to contribute to this discussion, you may do so maybe in about a minute so that then we can try out this task in about 10 minutes, rather for 10 minutes. But then has anybody got any, any comments, anything? I can see here uh, someone Consolata is saying that balancing face-to-face -face with online classes is another motivation. Okay, that's another thing maybe to, 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 to if you balance, is that you don't, for example, go in face-to-face -face only online full-time, but she's saying that blending can help to, to, to do this. Do you have any other comments, any question that you'd wish that uh, our subject matter expert, Dr. Navshaw Harriet, um, clarifies? Um, I'd like to ask Dr. Navshaw, um, while, while, while we design to have, for example, the, 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 the slide that was shown before, a student writing a summary and posting, would there be initial training to be sure that it is, it is incorporated within the course design that students are first taught how to actually write the summary, that that is an initial course, or you we, we assume that they actually know this. So for me, if I'm a student and this comes and I'm instructed to do A, B, C, D, and I actually do not know, that is one challenge that I would face as a student online. So thank you so, so much. Being, Mm -hmm. That's, sorry, thank you so much, uh, uh, Aaron, for that. Uh -huh. We train, we assume that this learner knows how to write a summary, okay? All this training that is carried out to do uh, these summaries. I don't know what um, your experience is, Dr. Napshaw. Okay, thank you very much, Richard and uh, Irene, for, for that question. Yeah. Um, Training, training in summary writing. <laughs> um, I wouldn't say that uh, we have a, a formal training to for students to to make summaries. But what I know is that when we give them a word limit, when we give them a word limit, they they should uh, they, that that is the guidance we think. Uh, should be enough for you to know how much you should write. If I have said 500 words, how far do you go? And uh, maybe the important points that, that, the, that you should put there. If I've said 200 words, then a summary of 200 words, how much have you read? And what is the question asking you? And uh, can what can can my answer fit in 200 words? What is important that must fit in the 200 words? Um, I think the words have been our guide, but uh, Richard, you could do, you could do something. It's, yeah, thank you, Dr. Navshaw. Yes, the words can guide, and and uh, there is no harm in us, of course, having a. A course, every course has that, has that orientation week. In that week, we can take off time and then, you know, just for, for course specific, we can guide this particular lecturer. Probably would have given them some guide at the beginning of the course in, the, in what you call week one or unit zero on what type of uh, writing is expected. Is it APA? So there are those guidelines that can be given. But another thing that maybe we shall cover in one of our sessions here is what we call a rubric, an assignment rubric. That when you give an assignment, you also give a rubric, some kind of like standard of good performance. So that if, you, if your essay or your summary has this and this and this and this, that's a good. Does it have mm -hmm. this? So that's another thing we shall look at here when we other sessions. 
how do you create rubrics? How do you guide your learner on the standards of Google performance and give them an activity? So that was really a valid question. And Dr. Hannah Shah also answered it um, really validly. Is there any other issue that we need to talk about before we um, do try out this activity? There's a task. I'm going to tell me to do the task. Yes, uh, Richard, uh, I wonder whether we should raise the questions now or whether we can wait uh, after the, the, the activity. What do you think? Uh, there is a question I have here. Uh, because uh, maybe some of the questions can affect the, the way the activity is going to be answered. If someone was not clear, I, I, I was questioning for people who need clarity on the, 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 in terms of, of designing an ETVT. On, a, on an activity and then that task that we're going to do. But Christine, you can still go ahead because it can help build on the knowledge. Then people can save time designing the task. Then we can save time at the end because we have answered most of the questions to designing an online activity. Okay. Okay, so this one says that uh, these activities, uh, don't they from the time it is developed and it says that with COVID-19, most curricula uh, that were initially meant to be face-to-face -face were translated into online automatically without proper alignment in a way. And uh, that in that case, should the department think of curricula review to endeavor that uh, these activities are properly aligned? Are you? So, Okay, thank you very much, Christine, and uh, the person who asked that question. We do not have to, we do not, with activities or activities, we do not have to review curriculum because you as a, as a lecturer or a tutor or somebody who is in charge of that course, you have rights to edit. You have rights to edit your, some of the contents of your course. You can go there, and if you think this uh, this activity is uh, is not addressing well the outcome of this content, you can always you know edit it and improve it. That one is allowed. Improvement of activities does not uh, need curriculum review. Thank you so much, Harriet. And also because of COVID nineteen, I think also the concern was that people just you remember we used to have lectures, normal lectures. So when COVID-19 came, what many people called online was to put the notes on the platform, then have Zoom lectures of three hours to duplicate what used to happen. Mm -hmm. And I think also there you have to overhaul the way you are delivering the pedagogy now. The pedagogy yes. on, online pedagogy differs from face-to-face -face pedagogy. So you may not don't overhaul the curriculum or the topics, whatever, but then the pedagogy, the way you are delivering, because you have to, you have to come from teacher-centered. That you're not talking for three hours, activity based learner center where you give activities and then as engage. So there's some something you have to do. Remember, curriculum documents don't have activities, don't have yes. assignments. It's, mm -hmm. it's in the pedagogy because in the instructional design, when you're developing, you may put there. Now, in curriculum development, we only talk about what we shall teach, what, what, but in the delivery, we give assignments which are not in the curriculum actually, but they follow the curriculum. Yes. So, so that's all right. Okay, so I think uh, finally we can have one from- I have Kristen. a question, Richard. Yes, yes, yes please, ZP. So thank you so much, Harriet, for, for that. Uh, actually, my notebook is uh, almost full because uh, you've answered most of the uh, questions that I have been having. So my question is, uh, do we have an ideal number of uh, activities that you should give uh, your students per topic? <laughs> Harriet? <laughs> Ideal. One thing uh, um, that we, we need to be careful about is not to overload the learners with <laughs> activities. I think uh, we've been experiencing it uh, in some courses because um, when, uh, when we are designing, sometimes you know, you're telling them to read, you're telling them to write, you're telling them to write this, do that. And then the learner is so overwhelmed that at the end of the day, they're actually not <laughs> attending to them. Yeah, so we, we, we should, there shouldn't be too many. They, they, they should be, um, what, what is the right word to use? 
maybe two, three activities could work depending on, and I think all this boils to the content you're handling or the topic that you're, you're handling. If you're teaching mathematics, they, they need many activities. If uh, you're handling history, they may not me need as many, you know? So it, it, I, I think it depends on the content or the subject you're handling. Uh, some subjects require more, more activities, others may not require many. But uh, what is important here is we should be careful not to overload the learners so that the, uh, in the end they are so overwhelmed that they don't really benefit from the uh, activities. That's what I would say. So thank you so much, uh, Dr. Nawasha for ably uh, answering uh, that. That question. So I think we can now go for that exercise. Only 10 minutes. At 12 minutes past six, shall return because this session is ending at 20 minutes past six. So we can do up 12 past six. Just let colleagues try out, uh, try out um, the, the the ETVT. So you can maybe you can display the the question that you want uh, colleagues to respond to the task. Then after about 12 minutes past six, we should be having something. We're not, we're, not going to have, we're not going to have a second question and answer session, but shall have someone just briefly reading to us an ETVT at 13 minutes past six, but at 12 past six, we shall close six exercises. So I think we'll have to take a short, uh, and it's not a break, we're just going to be a little silent and colleagues work. Just try to design something in any post that you're designing or the post that you're now around that area. If you have a pen and a paper somewhere and just, right there or type if you're fast, but at 12 past six, we shall call anyone who has managed to design something and then the person read it out, then we conclude this session. So by 6.20, we go to the next part of the program. So now we are working. If you want the example of the ETV to be displayed again, you can just pull out, we can display the example. If you want the task, but we type for, for now, let us ask up.
Maybe Harriet. Harriet. Unmute, unmute Harriet. Harriet. Yes, please. Yeah, there's, as the colleagues complete the task, there's a question in the, in the, in the chat that mm. uh, for the delay, delay, how do you take into account the learners scattered around the world who do not have the same time zones? For those deadlines, how do you take care of learners from different time zones? Maybe, uh, so you can answer that as colleagues work out the, the task. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, usually the, the, the time zone for the instructor, we use the time zone for the instructor, but there's also the, what do we call it, time converter? Yes. Yes, the, the time can be converted. The equivalent time can be converted for the learners in, in different places. If you are in Uganda and the student is in Ghana uh, and you, you want that work by 5 p.m. Ugandan time, what is 5 p.m. Uh, Ghanaian time? I don't know whether I've, I've said it. Yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> I think yeah. you, uh, you have emphasized that the, the facilitator's time zone. Yes. Usually, usually, yeah, usually then, and then, but the, so the, 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 the facilitator has to emphasize that this time is the African standard time. This particular course, we did not specify that time, I think, but because mm. uh, it was a bit, but all, all those learners, all those learners were within here. I, I, that's what I'm assuming. But where learners are scattered, mm. then you can say uh, such and such a date, uh, maybe 3 p.m. East African time. That way, the, the learner, wherever they are, uh, puts in the time converter, and they will know in their zone what exactly do you mean. Yes. But of course, we have, we, have also to, we have also to be careful that countries in the Far East, you may say a certain time when for them it has already passed. Because they are ahead, this so we just have to we just have to be careful. Okay, so that's why we have to say East Africans, so that they know that ah, okay, if in East Africa it is this time. Although some for some people, which is okay because in their country it may be deep in the night because they are in the far east. But for us, yeah, that would be the time. So we specify East African Standard Time or whatever you are. Yeah. It's Central. Africa. It's Central. Christine? Yes, Richard. It's that last comment in the chat in French. I don't know that it's the same that had been translated. Let me take a look at that. Let me have a look at it right away. Okay, uh, Richard, this is an important comment. Uh, I have posted this yes. in the chat. Uh, I think somebody is saying that uh, right now they are working on the task that is on the screen. Uh, so no one is talking. So I guess they can't hear anybody talking. So yeah, okay. We are all quiet. I think someone someone was wondering why there's silence. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we have we have one more minute into the task. One more minute into the task, and then we one person will just read to us what they have been able to write. Then the subject, the, the, then the audience will respond, and then we can close this particular session. Thank you. 
So colleagues, I think we shall uh, now have some call out presentation or just want just speak out, read out what you have been able to write. You don't have time to share the screen. Just time, at least you have practice. So is there anyone who to, to share with us? Um, um, to share with us the what you have been able to, to do? Christine, once again in the chat, there is something that has been posted. Okay. I, th I think that person is making a presentation. Maybe you can help us. Okay. And uh, Otherwise, if there's another who can read out something that you want, you want to share with us, read it out. We, we shall be glad to hear and comment. as Christine translates what has come through. Uh, there you go, Richard. You need me to read? Yeah, it's okay, you can read out. Oh, okay. It's a question, okay. not a solution. Eh? It was a response. Yes, it was oh. a response to the Harrietes. Um, yeah, because I think the French uh, translator has had issues. Ah, okay. okay. Yeah. So the longer was to was relating to what um, she had yes. commented. Yes. Okay. So colleagues, anyone who has been able to do the task and wish to share with us, just read out so that we can save time. Because I know I know that the people are doing the task. So Christine, Christine, Ye yes, Richard, we can hear you. Assume that our colleagues are still doing the task, or they completed it, uh, but are not sharing it. What can I assume? Okay, maybe maybe you give them one more minute and ask. Okay. Yes. Um, Kenneth, you can still display that task. That's for our colleagues to be able to remember. Oh, yeah, Christine, someone has posted now in the chat. I think now that is the task. Okay. Just a minute. Okay, I guess you can now check this out. So do you want me to read it or there it is in the chat room? Okay, you, I think it's okay. Okay, so this person says, and thank you very much, that uh, the purpose of this activity is to enable you to master um, collaborative and in video work tools that use the Google search engine and select for uh, DAW platforms of your choice and uh, list the tools you find in these platforms. Then clarify these tools according to whether they are collaborative or individual work tools. Uh, submit your work in the space reserved for this purpose. The duration is three days. Deadline is 30th of January, 2022 at 23.55 GMT. Uh, retrieve the work of one of your classmates and correct it on, be, on, on half a page, duration one day, deadline that, yes, so the participants. Thank you so much, Christine. 
Over to you. Okay. Yeah, thank you so much. So Harriet, I have shared this that task, which which uh, Christina has read out. You can just comment comment on that task. That's what she has read out. So you can comment, and then we can see is this person within what you were trying to advise. If you can zoom it a bit, the the. I increase the size. Mm. Okay, there. there. Okay, there. Yes. Yes. Um, we begin. the The person begins with a purpose, which is very important for for the learners. It's it's we we emphasize that it's good to highlight the purpose of the activity, and says the purpose of this activity is to enable you to master collaborative and individual work tools. Use the Google search and select four door platforms of your choice. So purpose is there and then goes ahead to say use the Google search is directing them on uh, what to use. And then select four, very specific four of your choice. That is also good. And then uh, list the tools you find in these platforms. Uh, and then uh, goes ahead to classify these tools. We have already selected. I don't know whether we need to list them. Uh, uh, here it's not clear a bit, but uh, the, the first sentences are clear, the opening sentence, the purpose clear what you want the learners to do, to use the Google search engine. They are directed to go to Google and then select four of these. Then uh, I think I would just skip this and say classify them unless the person will guide us. Unless uh, after I have selected, I classify these tools according to whether they are collaborative or individual work tools. That is what this person wants the learner to do. If I jump this, I think it's clear. Then submit your work in the space received, reserved for this purpose. What is missing here is where. Where is this space? It's important for us to provide location. And usually it's a link where the learners should. Uh, we always say here and they make it live so that when they click on it, they can go there and post the work that you want them to post. And then duration is saying three days deadline, that date, and has also given the time. I think everything is there. What, uh, what may be uh, needed is uh, to organize the flow so that the the, the activity flows uh, in a way that the learner can follow and understand what uh, the instructor wants. But the, other than uh, not providing where the learner should submit what they have worked on, I think most of the things are there in this activity. Yeah, thank Over you so here. much, Harriet. Yeah, maybe here when the person says and correct it, maybe. Mm -hmm. it's Oh, the assumption is that maybe it I may not be correct. Okay, okay. Uh, I had so not but maybe just uh, it could be retrieve if you want them to comment other work. work. Mm. Uh -huh. Retrieve the work of one of your classmates and correct it on a half page. Duration one day deadline. Okay. And uh, what is the, the purpose of correcting it? Yeah, that's where that's why I was saying that uh, maybe okay. this word corrected would be mm. assuming that uh, the other people are going to post work which is not correct. But we have a better way of uh, what do you want them yes. to comment? Maybe comment on maybe mm -hmm. the relevance of those tools or something like that. Yes. Comment pick a bit of the tools or something like that that you are calling or comment on those ones that are familiar, you're familiar with. So you can tell your friend that I'll mention this, I'm also familiar with it and how best mm. can work. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you so much, Dr. Nabushao. I think we are really run out of time. I thank you, colleagues, for uh, this uh, uh, participating. In, sorry, participating in the in the task.
And uh, Dr. Nabusha, you can give some closing remarks, just one sentence, then I then uh, we go back to the plenary. You can just one sentence, one sentence, <laughs> one second. <laughs> Uh, I yes. am so grateful. Thank you for the invitation to be part of this. And uh, I'm glad to be here. I, I, I pray that uh, what I've shared uh, will take, will, will help us to, to improve our e learning practice. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Dr. Nabushao. Dr. Zipi, thank you so much. And I want you also to just confirm with that. Dr. Nabushao has tried to handle the case in the way you wanted it to be handled. Ah, thank, you. thank you. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Richard. Thank you, Harriet, for answering or giving solutions to my question. And you can be sure that I'm going to share all these with my colleagues. As I said, my notebook is full because of the good answers that you have given. Thank you so much. I appreciate. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, Dr. Zipi Njagi, uh, thank you so much, Dr. Nabushao, for this. Oliza, thank, you, thank you so much for your participation. Uh, let me hand over back to Christine for the next part of the program. Christine, over to you. Thank you, Richard. Um, colleagues, I want to thank each one of you for being patient, for participating, and staying on up to this time. And many, many thanks to Dr. Zipi, Dr. Harriet, uh, for this a very engaging session on designing activities. You will agree with me that it was really very uh, engaging, but also very helpful. And of course, in so many questions, especially to us who, who do teach or who, who, who lecture uh, uh, in our different university. So allow me now to make just a few announcements as we get close to the end. One, uh, we have our e Slack platform as well as a WhatsApp group. So in case you would want to join this, kindly inbox me on email or uh, WhatsApp, whatever, and uh, I, we should be able to add you to these platforms uh, because we share so many materials on those platforms uh, and they are really very helpful. So our next session will be on the 23rd of Feb or February 2022 at 5 p.m. Uh, you will note that today we have had this on, on Thursday, which is different from the usual winnings because yesterday it was a public holiday here. So we are going to have our next session on Wednesday 23rd uh, Feb, so, but we shall communicate uh, as we move along, but also we'll let you know the topic that is going to be covered. In case any of you is interested in being our next subject matter expert or case presenter, still feel free to inbox us, myself or Richard. Uh, we shall get back to you and discuss the details. So we have uh, a survey which has been posted in the chat. Please, please take that survey as a satisfaction survey. It helps us to improve these sessions and it takes less than three minutes, please take that survey and you can feel free to even take it beyond after this session, it will still be open up to the end of tomorrow. So please take it. But finally, I should also mention that we have developed another survey, which we are going to share with some of you uh, in the course of next week. This is also uh, for purposes of helping us to uh, better uh, deliver these sessions and making them relevant to our uh, learning and teaching environment. Otherwise, uh, you are all uh, welcome. Thanks for being a part of this and we shall keep in touch. So thank you very much and have a blessed evening. So kindly take the survey or even register if you have not. We are really grateful. Thank you very much and bye-bye. Christine, please. Yes, yes. Maybe that team, that team has to stay behind, I think. Yes, yes.